there's one word that captures the full, comprehensive, redemptive work of Jesus Christ when he suffered and substitutionally died on the cross for sinners. That word is atonement. The New Unger's Bible Dictionary defines this word as the covering over of sin, the reconciliation between God and man accomplished by the Lord Jesus Christ. It is that special result of Christ's sacrificial sufferings and death by virtue of which all who exercise proper penitence and faith receive forgiveness of their sins and obtain peace. The powerful, incredible atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross reconciles sinners back to God from our alienation because of sin. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, it's stated like this, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but being made alive in the Spirit. Some extremely important characteristics of the atonement are, it was vicarious. It required suffering. It had a specific purpose, and it was particular. First, it was vicarious or substitutional. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, it stated like this, Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Second, it required suffering. There's no better commentary than Isaiah 53 on the immense sufferings of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 5, a small picture is stated like this. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. Third, it was definite in that it had a specific purpose to save sinners. It wasn't merely to provide the way of salvation. It's much more specific and precise. The atonement is God aiming and rescuing sinners through the work of his precious son on the cross. Fourth, it was particular or specifically for God's elect, those who were predestined to believe. Now please listen closely to John 10, verse 14 through 15. I am the good shepherd, I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I laid down my life for the sheep. For this reason, Christ's atonement was particular, because not all people are saved. In reality, some people just will not believe in Jesus Christ and the gospel. There's a serious danger in viewing the atonement to mean for all sin, for everybody. That danger is, what about a person's sin of unbelief? Did Jesus Christ suffer and substitutionally die for the unbelief of those who will never believe? If he did, the only conclusion is universalism. All people will be saved. And that's simply not what the Bible teaches. Finally, this last statement is most important. The atonement of Jesus Christ is made effectual to anyone and everyone who believes and calls on his name by faith, thus securing their salvation. That's the tremendous, effectual work of the atonement of Jesus Christ in the life of a believer.